course, there's going to be this delay of me watching the screen, seeing if it wakes up. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I see you, yeah. All right, the swapping around works. Um, okay, so welcome everybody. We'll get started here in about a minute. I don't want to rush anybody. Mm. How we can see Adrien? Good, the stream seems to be live. Um, <laughs> So for those of you asking where the uh, live QA schedule is, you should be able to see that on the DEF CON website. Uh, for those of you who are ready to ask questions of our amazing speakers, one of whom is standing on a roof and the other is in a yellow room, we will proceed um, right now, actually. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Fallible. I'm going to be one of your goons. Psyched's over here. And we t have um, Shaw and H Hadrian or Hadrian. He didn't correct me earlier when I think I said both. Any is fine. Any is fine. All right. Um, go ahead and give us a moment. Or actually, uh, tell us uh, the name of your presentation, and uh, we'll just get into asking some questions. So the presentation is DNS section. And I mean that's that's already quite quite good. Yeah, it's a really good name, I gotta say. It's a you know I, I love it when there's a nice pun in a in a uh, presentation name. So uh, thank you both very much for joining us for the Q and A portion. Um, I uh, if for any of you looking for their presentation, you should be able to find that on the DefCon YouTube page. Um, Let's get started with a pre-arranged question that you sent me because uh, you were really, really nice to us. So, which equipment slash tools do I need to perform this attack? Well, I guess I can answer this one. Uh, well, basically, you only need your computer and the few tools we have uh, presented uh, in the talk. So, uh, one to get hashes and one to break a hashes. So, just uh, NSEC free walker plus hashcat is much enough to perform this attack. Obviously, if you have a big GPU, it's much easier, but even on a, a CPU, you can use John the Reaper to actually get quite a lot of uh, DNS records. So, uh, you can really do this at home. And in fact, we've made a little challenge on the website, on the website, uh, on the last slide. So, DNS section .ovh. And if you want to try the tools specifically on our website, and you can then send us the hashes you've been broken, and uh, we have a, uh, we will put up a, a, some scores and see who's the best at it. So anyone can try it easily at home, but it's much better with a big GPU. Oh, it's on now. See, that's excellent. Um, we'll make sure that we put that in the uh, track one. Uh, chat here so people can uh, access that without having to guess. So good. Um, and I love that, that what you've come up with here is something that's very accessible for folks and it looks to me like it's a good place for people to enter into doing this type of work. Um, there's a lot of uh, presentations that go way over folks' heads if they're beginners or um, you know, having to set up a bunch of extra tools, and it looks to me like you folks have done one that's uh, going to be very accessible. So thank you for that. Um, so what did you do with all the data that you got? Um, how how much uh, how much did you get to pay by insert evil company for the whole data set? What so what what did you do with all this data? Perhaps I can answer this one. Um, uh, surprisingly, perhaps, we have not done anything with it. We we have the data and we didn't even exploit it to its fullest potential. So we've been very nice and very kind. That is very nice. You could have done so much interesting stuff. Um, yes. Extend that a little bit then and help me understand if you wanted to be... What would be the next step that somebody could take with it and not get ourselves in trouble with the lawyers? Well, you have already a lot you can do just by looking at the data itself. And that's part of what we've been doing and we've provided 
statistics about it uh, in in the talk and in, in the slides. But really, you can you can do much more than that. You can compare the data that you got from this with data you've got from somewhere else, uh, either from I don't know some other recon tool or from knowledge you've got from uh, research or OSINT or whatever. So really, it's just one tool in the whole toolbox you can get to extract information. Uh, I wouldn't say that all the other tools are completely legal. I wouldn't say that you wouldn't get into trouble by using the information you get that way. So use at your own risk and be very careful with it. But it's public information. It's publicly displayed. It's just that sure. the information itself is meant to be private. It's meant to be hidden, but it's on public display. So uh, I think I think that that's one way to answer your question. It's uh, you can you can really do a lot if you use that data and collate it with other sources of data and actually input whatever you got from I don't know uh, email address addresses into a um, database of broken passwords and then you get access to that um, email address, for instance. And I think Adrien may have uh, other ideas as well what to do with it. Well, um, actually, uh, legal over your ideas, uh, I think you've pretty much said everything. <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh, the restraint there. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, okay, that, 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 that's useful to know. So um, how much did it cost for you to run this GPU attack? Well, uh, in practice, it did cost us absolutely nothing, except basically some time to set up the thing. Uh, because uh, we got access to some uh, free GPU time. But I did try to estimate how much it would have cost us if we had, for example, just uh, rented uh, AWS uh, GPU instance. And I do estimate the cost of the attack between $1,000 and $2,000. However, uh, if like I did only use like maybe attempts of uh, time we were uh, able to use, I think we would maybe I found at least 80% of the number of hashes we were able to find with 10 times more power. So like even with your laptop, with your laptop, even without a GPU and only a simple laptop CPU, uh, I think you can get easily uh, maybe two thirds of the hashes we were able to crack with uh, our big GPU. Illustrating that classic 80-20 uh, rule then. Yes, basically that. Pretty much. That's. We do have a couple of questions from the, the chat, if you'd like to. So one is, uh, what are some additional examples of confidential information that are being stored in DNS? So the question is whether there were confidential information. I, I think they're correct. asking, uh, other than the emails that you were able to pull out, was there other examples of uh, information that that people would expect to be confidential that you were able to pull out. So. Adrien, perhaps you can you can say more about the kind of things we find. Well, uh, specifically on uh, uh, on OVH, there was nothing else we were able to find, and we did not really look much in, for other kind of data. We are quite, quite quite happy with what we found there, but there are some other examples of uh, such private info, for example, uh, if you take the domain key records, uh, some people might know about this. It's one of the uh, various uh, DNS records you put up to avoid uh, email spam and things like that. Uh, there's a very recent article or blog post, I forgot, uh, about someone mining for all these domain key records and finding out uh, which mailer uh, different company use and who and like who, uh, which is their email partner. So he was able to dig quite a lot of valuable information also for the use of the GNS records. And I'm pretty sure uh, there are many other users of private uh, info in GNS data, but it's not so easy to find it. And if I may add to this, uh, although the email addresses may seem like it's a small thing, it actually is the basis on top of which we could explore further, find the names of people, find uh, new uh, hosts to, to target and even some private information about uh, these people because the email addresses showed that they were working at the same company, for instance. 
So it's it's an email address, but even then you can say a lot from this. So there was a follow-up question of whether you meant uh, domain key uh, as a D DKIM, IM. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, I think D DKIM and domain key is something different. Uh, I'm not sure. I forgot exactly, but it's kind of the same thing. And if it's not the same, it's another protection for email. Uh, clearly, in the DNS, it shows up at something dot underscore domain key uh, dot your domain. And uh, bad people use a... Uh, easily guessable something and good people use a long hash for the something and people who do use the long hash for something uh, make it very difficult to find uh, the domain key but uh, I, I I will need to check up for the domain key versus DKM thing so I love Great, this I love this other question that came in as well from Angel Rain of uh, what is the impact to me the general internet user which is always a nice thing to be able to uh, to encompass of how is this going to affect somebody who is just out there trying to do their job? Well, uh, if you are an OVH customer, then you might have quite some issues. And I would, uh, like, if you do have some private email redirection, then I would suggest you to uh, use one of the uh, mitigation we talk about in, uh, in the, the in the talk, if uh, you're not an OVH customer, well, I guess uh, if I would just uh, log on to my uh, cloud provider and watch my DNS zone and see if there are some records. I was not expecting that, and if there are, well, do submit the talk for DefCon def next year. <laughs> now that's good advice. Okay. Well, let's move on with uh, one of the other questions that, that you've uh, posted for us here. So, uh, why does DNSSEC only use old crypto? Perhaps I can take this one. Uh, old crypto is not nice, uh, but it is It is a lot of um, the things you would see some years ago on the internet. And now most of the internet, I mean, the browsers and servers have moved on to other algorithms um, that are faster and some of them some of them are even considered more secure but dns you have to understand dnssec works under a lot of constraints it has to be uh, very very fast because it's used at scale so you cannot use all the algorithms you'd like you have to use the fastest ones and that's actually been a reason why cryptography took a long time to 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 get inside of dnssec to the extent that it is now because even today we're deploying uh, security extensions uh, and we have to account for cryptographic operations taking time and latency. Uh, you also have to account for compliance because some technologies are um, constrained by laws in the different countries that you would be uh, in. And therefore, if you want to use DNS, which of course you do worldwide, you have to account for the fact that some technologies are not considered um, legal or accepted in some places. So you have to deal with a very small subset of the possible algorithms and you have to have all the DNS resolvers and all the DNS servers supporting these algorithms. And you have to be fast. So you, you are you're playing at a, a lot of different constraints and that reduces the set of possible algorithms you can use to essentially two of them or three of them. Uh, one is not usable at all. It's RSA, or it's not really usable at all at scale. And the other is ECDSA, which you can use to sign very fast, but it's on a fixed curve, which from a cryptographic standpoint is not ideal. It means you cannot build on all the innovations of the 21st century uh, to try and get the best performance and the best security uh, out, of, uh, out of this. So really that's, that's the reason you need to do things fast at scale while keeping governments happy. That's a rough combination of things to, to deal with if you're trying to future-proof your technology. It has to be fast, so some of the uh, methods that we have aren't going to immediately work there. And you have to have compatibility with the, the old stuff, so um, interesting. All right, um, so another side question on this one. 
How did you find yourselves doing the testing on uh, DNSSEC in the first place? Well, I think Adrien should answer this one. Well, uh, actually, I, th I think we explained that in the talk, but uh, the story is quite nice. It happens that I, I, am, a, I am an OVH customer for, like, long, well, actually, for, since many, many years. And uh, one day, I just did add a uh, redirect uh, on my domain just to test what it would do. And then I did realize uh, that, well, some record has popped uh, in the DNS zone. And from there, I just... Uh, thought that maybe I'm not the only one to have such a behavior. So I did try on a friend domain first and same issue. And then you guess uh, what happened. And then we see what happened. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, hey, Saiget, uh, you mentioned you might have another couple of questions. You're welcome to drop those in whenever you might like to. So. Other things that you've, um, can you give me any idea of where you would have gone with this research had you more time or had you more, um, let's go with more permissions if you had been told by somebody that you were allowed to? Is there, a, is there some space that you would have liked to have gone with this presentation? Well, one thing, like assuming I had all permission, would have been to actually send an email to people we were able to find info, data about and ask them first if uh, they didn't know that their redirection were almost public. And other thing uh, would be to ask them for the, to tell us which redirect we did not find. So we get a better idea of uh, what kind of uh, plain text we were not able to recover from our hashes. So two ideas which I consider are not evil. It would be, really be some research thing, but would ha have required uh, more permission. Uh, Remy, any other idea? Well, in the more evil kind of things we could do, of course, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we could collect this information with other information we have. For instance, all the hosts uh, that people use to receive their emails, well, most of them were Gmail, so it's it's not necessarily the most interesting things, uh, but some of them are not. And we could look into these and we could try and see uh, the proportion of email addresses that are self-hosted or that are hosted in known to be vulnerable domains. That would also be extremely interesting. Um, as I also think we say in the talk, we could look at the pwned email databases or pwned addresses database to see how much of these redirects are actually directly usable by people in the know uh, to, to get an account and to, to use. So these are two things that would be curious to know about, which are perhaps a bit less nice, of course. Good answers. All right, I like where you're heading on that one. Uh, there was a follow-up question in the chat over here from Overdrive. Uh, although there is an RFC to add EDSA to DNSSEC, why isn't it used more widely, even though it, an my, uh, I'm, I'm talking here, even if it answers all the caveats, performance and security you talked about. So um, why isn't it used more widely? Um, EDSA. And ECDSA. Mm -hmm. I think I can answer this one. Uh, ECDSA is being deployed. So it is at the time that we're talking, it's, it's, widely deployed it's getting almost there uh it wasn't true a few years ago so really it's, it's the, the question is more about what took so long before we started implementing ecdsa at scale and perhaps i mean i don't have the full answer to that but perhaps part of the reason is that it wasn't clear which solution to zone walking should be implemented as we mentioned in the talk, the issue of zone walking has been identified fairly early on and on NSEC. And so NSEC 2 and NSEC 3 have been proposed, and NSEC 4 has been proposed as well, and NSEC 5 has been proposed. And the problem is, uh, and most of them, are NSEC 2 and NSEC 4 didn't see the light, and NSEC 4 has not been finalized, and NSEC 5 has not, has not been finalized. So people were waiting, perhaps, on a solution to emerge 
to be stable, to, to support. Because again, when you're doing DNS, when you're doing backbone of, of the internet kind of things, you want to support things very long term. So there was an expectation that some of the candidates would uh, happen to be the, the, the right one. And that did not happen for a very long time. And in fact, uh, ECDSA is not the best candidate. It's just the best available candidate using existing technology. It accomplishes enough of the, uh, the the pieces and there's no better idea right now, huh? Interesting. Um, you gave me one final question over here, which seems like it's a little more fun. So there was a slide with a locksmith on the DNSSEC rollover session slides. What is the story behind the slide with the locksmith? Adrian? Okay, well, uh, so uh, it's uh, during a DNSSEC rollover uh, key session, so something that happens, if I remember correctly, maybe every three months. And uh, it's like a very scripted ceremony with many steps and everyone getting things out of the safe, signing keys, putting them back, auditing everything. And it happens, and uh, like maybe uh, one day before the ceremony, during a rehearsal, they saw that uh, one of the safe uh, containing one of the HSMs was jammed. So uh, what you do? Well, you do have to crack the same open. And so they had to hire a locksmith to open it. I think like it took 28 hours to open it. So a lot of work. And so they had to pay everyone uh, two more hotel nights because they had to delay the ceremony. So even uh, with cryptography, you sometimes have to get back to your old locksmith and crack safes open. Ah, uh, physical security is never out of style, is it? Yeah. No, but at least since it took the last week, like 28 hours to open it, uh, I'm hoping that any bad people would have been detected before they were able to actually open the safe. That is kind of the thing with the uh, with the safe cracking, right? You're always going to be able to get in. You just hope it takes long enough to be noticed. <laughs> Fantastic. So as we... Um, I think I, I think I already asked a part of this, but we'll hit it again just to uh, to make sure we cover our bases. Um, where would you want somebody else who has a different set of skills or a different amount of time or a different background to do their own research on this subject? Is there something that you would point someone towards if they were looking for a research sub a research topic of their own? I have a ton of that. Adrien may have an, uh, others as well. Um, perhaps I can start by saying that, uh, as I hinted to, uh, DNS is something that has that, that has to be understood at a global scale. And something that should be understood is that, uh, although it's all virtual and it's all the internet, uh, it really uh, is made of servers that have a physical implementation somewhere that are under some jurisdiction somewhere. And something I would like people to look into is the geopolitics of how this whole uh, agreements and choice of algorithms and choice of position where you put the servers, uh, the latency as a function of geography, all the interconnections between um, the backbone of the internet and uh, the way most people use it make it transparent, but really it matters, and uh, the geopolitics, so the influence of international agreements, discussions, not only economical, but also political. So that would be one thing I'd like people to look into. Ah, do you hear that, all of you folks who are into international politics and uh, where the lines get drawn? You have somebody who would like to work on you from the technical side. Absolutely. Adrien, I think, has many ideas as well. Uh, on uh, this very specific subject, not so much, actually. The best idea I had was actually about the domain key thing I just told before, but someone already did it like two months ago. So uh, that's very good. So it shows that uh, I'm, we're not the only one looking at the uh, DNS records. Uh, but then uh, on the uh, more general thing, it's you, you, you could consider this leakage almost like some kind of... Uh, 
side channel attack. So it's some kind of very low tech side channel attacks, and I'm pretty sure there are many other uh, areas where you could find public data where you're not expecting it at all, just where it's a little hidden. So that's it, there's a little of, of luck you need because you need to first find you need to find the first record, but if one day you do find some public info that you are not supposed to find, well, try to dig up uh, behind it and find out if it is just one or if there are thousands of such info in the same place. I also have a suggestion on for the more cryptography oriented people. Um, the way that zone walking is mitigated is by using uh, white lies. So you would sign a lot of information, and so you can force the server to produce a lot of signatures. ECDSA is famously a brittle algorithm, and so if the implementation on the server is not absolutely perfect, it's quite likely that by collecting millions, billions of signatures, you can actually obtain the private key um, with known techniques. So one thing that we didn't look into, but you may want to check is, okay, can I find DNS servers that have not the latest uh, open SSL library, say, uh, use known attacks against ECDSA enforcing the white light, the white lies mechanism to obtain the necessary signatures. And then, well, perform a DNS spoof. Something like this might be interesting. That is a nice uh, sequence of events there. I like where you're going. So we'll, it'll be neat to see if somebody... Just to, uh, oh, to add on this, uh, I have uh, already tried a few millions uh, to get a few million records and try non 3 on it. So the most basic ECDSI attack, and it was not successful, but maybe some uh, more advanced attack would actually work. We will make sure that uh, we have your contact information in the uh, uh, track one channel over here at the end of this so that people can ping you if they would like to talk about this further. In fact, now is probably a good time to make sure that is there a place that you would like for people to reach out to you if they have more questions or thoughts about the work that you've been doing? DNSSection.ovh and you have all the contact info on this website. So that's the website to put uh, on the chat. Perfect. Um, we'll get somebody to drop that in there for us. So, um, Saigat, I don't want to just uh, bulldoze you here. If you have another thought for us right now, then if you have a question, drop us with that before I do our closeout. So we do have one more question from the the audience uh, was asking about geopolitically, where do you see uh, C8 providers fitting in, say, borders of countries that are apt to be taken over? Would you personally prefer a C8 provider being further away from those border borders, or do you think it matters at all? That's an excellent question for which I think there is no easy answer, but that's what makes a good question. Um, I think the borders are a huge, uh, a huge issue. Um, it does matter. As you know, CAs uh, are generated usually using machines, dedicated machines, and whoever seizes them has the possibility to do whatever they want with it. So, yes, indeed, if you have CAs, if you want to uh, have any kind of guarantee about the physical security of something, put it as far away as you can from moving borders. Absolutely. Great. All right. So my last question that I like to hit people with is what would be your call to action? Not just something that you want people to research further, but um, what would be the, the, the core of what you're attempting to get people to understand or to get interested in about the work that you're doing and um, uh, give people that leg up on moving forward? Uh, that's a that's that's a complicated question. Um, I think I think Adrien already put forward the notion that uh, look around yourself, look around the technology that we use every day. Uh, the more we use it, the less we ask about it, the less we wonder about how it works and why it works and why it doesn't work. And we we tend to be focused on getting work done. What we do is exactly the opposite. 
we're trying to to stop and think about okay it doesn't work it's interesting it's like bugs you know people try to kill bugs whenever they see a bug and we like more collecting them and and say oh well that's nice this one has uh, this, this one has wings and this one is uh, eating some stuff so we really try to do that and to call for people to focus on issues not to try and solve them but to try and look at issues for themselves as something that's interesting and that brings not only solutions but brings uh, more intelligence more 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 ideas into the game but that's my take on it Adrian perhaps might have something more less poetic to say well, uh, no actually I, I do agree with you and even like you know uh, in my other life I am a software engineer and what I do find a bug even something which is just strange but never happens again in other circumstances, I always put it for a rainy Friday and try to look at exactly what happened. And often, uh, more than just this, uh, this bug often uh, shows some hidden secret that uh, we, are, we are really um, happy to fix before it actually triggers for real. So, uh, as a matter of fact, yes, do look, do look around you and try as much as possible to get to the bottom of uh, strange things to find out if it is only bidding or if there is a long story behind it. I appreciate those answers and I appreciate the two of you very much for coming to join us for this. I also am very much entertained by the light mode, dark mode thing we have going on with the, uh, you know, outside and then, you know, in the dark. So this is cool. Thank you so much for your presentation and for spending your time with us. Um, if anybody has any additional questions, they have posted, uh, Olivia posted the DNS section.ovh in the Track One Live QA, so you can find that there. Uh, otherwise, have a great rest of the convention, and we hope to see more from you folks soon. Well, thank Indeed. you very much to all DEFCON goons to, have, uh, to be able to make uh, this uh, session what happened this year. So. Thanks a lot to you too. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Cheers.